Welcome to the Best Small Business Podcast, where you get powerful insights, breakthrough ideas, and simple solutions that make your business unbelievably successful. I'm BJ Flagg. And I am Rich G. This is episode 161. The fourth quarter push might not be the same this year. May not be the same. No, no. Yep. Yep. We have some data points to share. Yes. You know, we want people to kind of understand where we think things may have been this year. Yep. 100% of our businesses have been challenged this year. (laughs) Yes. Yes. All of us have been pivoting, have pivoted somehow. Either we have accepted more work because of essential businesses. Some of us have had to reimagine our business models completely. Yeah, we can predict that 100% of businesses will be doing more of this in 2021. (laughs) Right, right. We don't mean to make light of it, but what we're trying to say to everybody is your own personal business is, it's hard. It's like your business. And we, what we want to say to everybody is you've been through a year, but on the good side of things is you've made it through the year. Yes. You've made it through the year. And we're hoping these tips today will help us look at the fourth quarter in this different way and realize that we're all in it together. Yeah, it's, it's, it is tough. And I know I'll be talking a little bit more about it, but it's, it, it's going to be hard for you to do this because we haven't been thinking this way over the past seven months. Right. So excellent. Well, let's dive right in. BJ, what's tip number one? Step back and look at the last three quarters to better understand where you want to be on 1231. So if you could imagine, we need to not only look at the numbers, but we need to see what was the business like? understand the business models and if there were any pivots. So you're really kind of looking almost a bird's eye view, looking down and trying to decide really what has happened. Yeah. yeah. And what, what do you feel could be brought forward in the fourth quarter? Anything that needs to be discontinued also. So there's that dichotomy. What can I continue doing and what should I stop doing? Right. And really what I, you almost want to look at this task, this thing you're going through and say to yourself, I'm going to write myself a letter as if I'm sitting in the old easy chair on December 31st, 2020. And I'm writing, I'm going to write the letter as if you are mentioning all the great things that worked out and what you were able to do and how you did it. And this letter will be one of the most motivating things you have done to get you through this next 10 to 12, you know, 10 to 12 weeks. Absolutely. When you do this kind of self-reflection, kind of like journaling, Mm -hmm. you, it motivates you because it gets you out of, um, you know, reactive mode to more of a uh, proactive mode. Right, so, which leads us into tip number two. We want you to move from a reactive mode <laughs> <laughs> over the past year to a more proactive mode in October, November, and December. What we're really trying to say is this is going to be hard. And we haven't been able to make plans for the last seven months because it's like landmines have been exploding for the last seven months. So we now have to sit down and better understand how we're going to reach, interact, and satisfy our customers. And, you know, you've seen where people have deviated from the norm during the pandemic, right? Due to the pandemic. But you also can focus on those areas where they have stayed the same and maintained their behavior and habits. So really here, we need you to look at your customer base. You need to look at your vendors and just better understand not just the deviations, which are so pronounced, but also the, the, the sames. Yeah. It's, 
for the last seven months, we've been all the news. Everyone has been focusing on the deviations in, in our habits, our behaviors, mm-hmm. our, our purchasing patterns and how we're doing things. And that's fine. But what we've, I think, forgotten is what where have we stayed the same? Where have we maintained a, a commonality of how we react, our habits, our purchasing patterns, what things have stayed the same and take advantage of those things. This is where you could begin to build a foundation of plans to close out the year up and not down. Right. And, and you have to feel you have to get out of that reactionary mode. Yeah. So much, you know, that uh, feeling like, uh, because you've almost worn yourself out from it. Exactly. Let's just as an aside, let's just think about how are people going to do Halloween? How are people going to do Thanksgiving? How are people going to do the holidays? What's going to stay the same and what's going to be different? You can make assumptions and then figure out how to satisfy those needs. Yeah. And, you know, if your business is such that um, you, you know, have contracts that you're working on and work has to get done how can you you know bring some levity into it how can you help them just that little step extra yeah to make their because they're going to go through a whole lot not having the holidays be just as they have always been what can you guys do to kind of just levitate it a little bit so there there's definitely things that you can do uh, and be proactive which is wonderful Uh, Tip number three, now that you are seeing the future, make a week-by-week plan of what you need to do. I really want everybody to get granular by business group, by goal, by team. Now is the time to make this weekly sheet of what you've got to do in order to accomplish those goals. That's so important because... Doing a week-by-week plan allows you to change slightly. So you're not doing a three-month plan. You're doing Mm -hmm. week-by-week. And this allows you to create a trackable data point to see your incremental movements as you move along week after week. Mm -hmm. You can stay alert and act fast to make any tweaks to your plan. And this is the time to be as focused as you can on this tight timeline. And I can't even stress this enough, but rally the troops. This is definitely the time to positively make the whole team know that you feel this is achievable. So do you see how I said that? Make sure they know you feel this is achievable. Yes. And and how and exactly how be specific. You know, I think in a lot of sense, you've got to give them their te- their game plans, elicit support and, you know, get your team leaders in there may not be the actual leader, might be a team leader. So what can you do to really rally those troops? Yeah, you need to build buy in and then oh, yeah. and, and then report to everyone on the success and the changes that are happening. Do not give up on this plan. Keep moving. Each week, uh, you know, continue the plan, change the plan, monitor the plan. Don't give up. Don't just go, oh, heck, nothing's happening. That's it. Yeah. And changes, when we say changes as opposed to failures, you know, we say success and changes. No. Get your team to think quick. Think uh, that reactionary mode that they've been in will give them um, a better ability to say, let me make a quick change. Let me do this little switch. They won't look at it as a failure and they'll keep moving forward, which is fantastic. Yep. Okay. Here's tip four. You're not going to like tip four. (laughs) Yeah. Little heads up. You know, you love me and rich though. Yeah. Tip four is (laughs) carve out two days in November before Thanksgiving to start on 2021 planning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
and here's more homework. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. But both BJ and I want you to start 2021 planning. And if you can do it in the fourth quarter, you could do it for the next four. So mm -hmm. look at this October, November, December as a, a as a, a preamble to 2021. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you can be broad with your assumptions, you know, stay away from in the case of the 2021 plans, stay away from the tight details. Yeah. What you want to do is give your team the ability to think broadly, just think blue sky. What could we be doing? Think of, you know, everybody having the vaccine and they're back at work and everything's great. What could you do? Yeah, and that's really where we need your head. And this is where you could try something new. Mm -hmm. You can reach out to a different customer base. You could push your team to deliver exceptional customer service. Mm -hmm. So it's really a time where we want you to feel back to feeling that positive nature that really made your business so successful. So we're, we're giving you no additional homework. Just, yeah. just follow the tips. Follow the tips. Print no resource. Out, follow the tips. No yes. resource today. So, and that's it for today. Hit the subscribe button down below to ensure you never miss any of our episodes. And if you like this podcast, feel free to share it with your friends. We're on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and I'm doing a lot of dancing right now on TikTok. So it's a lot of fun. So click the thumbs up button. The more you click, the more people hear our weekly podcasts. And I want to thank all of our core business partners who helped us put together 161 podcasts. And of course, our producer, and thank God he's an editor, yes. Richard Scalzo. Richard. The man who makes everything happen. Speak to you soon and have an unbelievable week. Catch you later. <laughs> <laughs>